question. So. In, a, in a sense, wouldn't all government be a form of violence, Dave? Yes, and that's why that's why government is a false solution. I actually have a uh, an interesting piece that I'd like to challenge our listeners to read. It's called "A Way to Be Free" by Robert Laferve. And if you just Google "A Way to Be Free," um, you should find it. It's like the first hit. So he says uh, in this essay, he says, "The new frontier waiting to be conquered by man isn't a continent." or even the vast reaches of space. Were a new location to be found, were it possible to achieve colonization of some planet other than Earth, a fight, a fight to take up residence would be an escape, a way of temporizing with the real frontier. Today's frontier challenge comes from the mind. It is absurd to suppose that, that all will see this or prepare to cope with it, nor is it necessary. No frontier has ever demanded that everyone cross the barriers, nor has there ever been a guarantee that those who cross it will find paradise. Indeed, there is no guarantee whatever. Doubtless, many wrong avenues will be followed. Predictably, some persons will fail and even die in making the attempt. But the future of our species beckons in that direction. Human beings are going to have to learn to live in a society that is not ruled by man-made government. This was not always true, but it is true now. Relocating with the same philosophic baggage until we'll produce the same errors we, have, we are struggling with now. That's the crux of the problem. If we if we continue the the longer we continue to attempt to reform and participate in the existing political system we have, the longer we'll have the existing political system we have. Four five eight talk the number. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Hi. Uh, please repeat the title of that thing again. It's uh, the title of the essay is A Way to Be Free. Okay. By Robert Laferve. Who are we talking to this morning? Ron. Ron, what's on your mind? I attended that borough assembly meeting the other night, but I've been attending them off and on for 30 years. And uh, if that's not our avenue, I certainly want to hear what our avenue is, because for the first time in 30 years, we have four young people on that assembly who are not tools of the public employees. And that's made the biggest change that I've seen in all of that time. And uh, if there's a better way, I sure want to hear it explained. Because, uh, you know, as, as it's clear to see, there change can be made, but it's an ongoing struggle that just goes every year, every month, the same old thing. The people have been putting that tech cap in place now for over 20 years, since 87, and still the public employees dominate the process. So is that enough food for thought and talk? Yeah, I yeah. think so. I think what Dave's really trying to put across to everybody, and I'm just speaking for him, um, is that it doesn't matter which mob's ruling, which side you view is best, they're still oppressing the minority. That's the big problem with a mobocracy, better known as democracy, that we're spreading all over the world. Somebody's always oppressed. Yeah, you have the people in government, even the borough government, and Basically, if they're not making a law against someone, then they're not doing anything, which I would prefer they didn't even show up. Prefer the mayor didn't show up, prefer the yeah. assembly members didn't show up, nothing. You know, yeah, the, you know, the salary freeze, um, that's, you know, that's a, a step in the right direction, maybe. But, like, the tax cap, let, let's talk about that. The, the borough budget has, uh, the tax cap has always been bigger than the borough budget. I mean, which is, like... The proposed tax cap has always been bigger than what the proposed budget is for that year. So, how is the tax right? But I mean, it's significantly larger. So, the tax cap is not, you know, 10% smaller than next year's budget, right? There's no squeeze, squeeze put on by by that force. Um, you know, it it provides some theoretical upper limit. But the the other problem is like as long as as long as the borough exists as a mob where you can go down and get your way if you get enough people, you're going to have, you know, the public versus the unions, right, or this this battle, right, this conflict, and and so then it's instead of instead of looking at it as the borough has a pile of stolen money uh -huh. that they're going to dole out, it's it's how is the borough going to distribute its money, right? The the idea. The idea that they're dealing with stolen money gets obfuscated by the conflict. People come and argue with themselves in testimony. They go, oh, you know, 
I represent the schools and I care about our children. And these people who want to cut taxes want our children to die in the streets, right? And so it's always reduced to this conflict between uh, us, you know, the members of the community, us, you know, the union, the union employees who are my neighbors versus me, you know, versus my other neighbors who have kids, whatever. And it's because the, the power structure itself pits us against each other, right? No matter who's in charge, right? Even if people, you know, people imposing uh, a salary freeze or cutting the budget and leaving leaving more of the stolen money in our pocket, um, there's still this. As long as that system exists, it 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 clouds our vision to see, to seeing that the money is being stolen, right? So it pits neighbor against neighbor instead of you know neighbor against. Okay, let let's say I accept your premise. Okay. Uh, I would like to hear the rest of the show telling us the alternative what we need to do well the the alternative system doesn't exist because well it does exist it's called the market um, but as long as we as long as we participate and perpetuate the existing system starting with just our sanction of it right how much how much we believe in it uh, which is based you know largely on our participation in it and and how we how we talk to other people you know when we when we talk to other people about liberty right it's important not to forget where that liberty comes from. It's it's inalienable, right? It's um, it's built into all of us as individuals, and that's something you know they were talking about the Tenth Amendment at the beginning of the show. A lot of times, you know, we see we see something like the Tenth Amendment as a way to protect the rights that are inalienable and inherent in all of us. But in that issue, we get so caught up talking about a specific bill or, you know, a specific nullification project that we we get confused to thinking that that's where our, our chance for liberty comes from. But we are, we're already free, right? We were born free. And so we can't forget the basis of that. So, you know, participating in, in borough politics or going down and testifying, that's not necessarily a bad thing. But little victories in the borough that, that get us, you know, a, a tiny fraction closer to where we should be are not you know, are not actually victories per se, and and political victories can often be confused as a meaningful uh, victory towards liberty, but the meaningful victory towards liberty occurs in our in our minds and in the minds of everybody else in the community. So that has to be the ultimate goal. That may be the goal, Dave, but I mean, I, unless everybody starts acting like free men and start taking responsibility for themselves and stop giving away their rights to other people and until everybody starts doing it you're going to continue to have other people coming and knocking on your door and trying to tell you what to do right well you can only change yourself i mean no matter even if you even if you point a gun at somebody's head and tell them to do this or that you can't you can't change what they think so it starts with ourselves right we can only change who we are uh what and what we believe to be right right and then we can we can talk to people outside of ourselves and and try and influence their thinking, but you can't force anybody to change. So this starts with ourselves and changing our own way of thinking. All right, All right. appreciate the call, Ron. Men. Historically, it's never taken everyone anyway. Yeah. All right, we are coming up here in the break and the about on the hour. We got about a minute or so until we get there. Uh, it, you mentioned that essay. Uh, the ferve, a way to be free. Obviously, people have to educate themselves, Dave. Uh, is there a group that's meeting with uh, that you guys talk about? Yeah, if somebody, somebody if you Google uh, Fairbanks Campaign for Liberty, you'll find our group, and we uh, we read a different book every two weeks and discuss it. And anybody is welcome to come to those and um, and you know share their opinions. That's what it's all about. Campaign for uh, Fairbanks campaign? Fairbanks Campaign for Liberty. If you just Google that, you'll find our, our meetup site. All right. And so you guys, you, you talk about some of these issues. You would kind of read books. Uh, yeah, we're reading uh, The Politics of Obedience for next uh, our next meeting. So that's another really good one. You read too much. Can we just uh, do you have like a DVD series <coughs> we can just watch? You know, uh, Some of the books we read are on audiobook, so... <laughs> but that's about as good as it gets. All right. You know, I, I think that this is part of what's wrong with America. If you look at uh, the, the founders and how much they read and how much they were actually literate, not not even in, in terms of knowing how to read, but the things that they read, they were literate in the classics. Yeah, they could read uh, they could read and write five languages. So they didn't just read a lot in English. They read in Greek, Latin, uh, German, French. I mean, yeah, they're pretty amazing. 
All right, gentlemen, we'll be right back here after the Fox News with more Patriots Lament. Be sure to tell your friends that you can listen online at KFAR660.com and join us in the chat room. You've got it on the home for Fox News in Fairbanks, KFAR. Fox News Radio, I'm Brett Larson. Thousands of homes have already been damaged by flooding water in Burlington, North Dakota, and the mayor says city services have been shut down by the floods. Right now we're at the uh, city wells. I think we are going to be losing water. Uh, we've, we may have to shut the entire town off from the water supply. Mayor Jerome Gruenberg, a chance of rain is in the forecast, but the National Weather Service says those storms don't appear to be widespread or long-lasting. New York became the sixth and largest state to have gay marriage after the state Senate passed a bill allowing same-sex weddings. The governor, Andrew Cuomo, praised the vote. We reached a new level of social justice this evening. Marriage equality. The 33-29 to vote came down close to midnight Eastern time. The governor signed the bill shortly thereafter. Fox News, we report, you decide. When you want to know about it and talk about it, there is no yes or no answer to that question. Turn to 6.60 a.m. It's not going to happen. KFAR. All right, you've got it on Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. Got a little blitzkrieg going on in the background right now with Metallica. Gentlemen, uh, somebody must have said something because all four lines are lit up. Shall we go back to the phone? Yeah. All right, 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hey, who is this? I must have been the first one line, Joe. Joe, actually, you were the third one there to get through. The other folks had died. Been on hold, but dropped the line. Go ahead. What's on your mind? Okay, uh, I'm sure the I'm sure you guys have read uh, Plato's uh, Republic. Yep. Yeah, and uh, you see that he wasn't happy about democracy either, and uh, for possibly different reasons than you guys are. But here's the, here's where the problem here's the problem I see with what you're saying. You're assuming some kind of uh, extra sensory sense of justice and morality. See, there's nothing intrinsic to us. First of all, you said we're born free. We're born totally dependent. Totally. I mean, it's exactly the opposite to what you said. When we, we pop out, we don't even, we can't even eat without help. So, what we're talking about is someone that goes from total dependence to total independence. And that is the transition that you guys haven't paid enough attention to. That's the problem. Uh, what do you what do you mean by the transition? Well, I mean the transition. When you're a baby, you have no power. Right. Yeah, but who decides when you do have power? Well, yeah, that's um, actually that's talked about by uh, there are a lot of uh, okay, philosophers who talk about, about that. What's the answer? There's no answer to yeah, it. No, the answer the answer historically uh, is when you leave the home, right? When you oh, when oh, you I leave see. when you leave. What if you want to, What if you want to leave when you're seven? Can you do that? Well, the the age of seniority uh, until ah. it be, until it became a uh, legal um, term, which it is now. You know, when you turn 18, you're an adult now. Um, it was when you chose to leave the home. Now, whether that was to whether that was because you were sick of your parents or because you were going into an apprenticeship or whatever. That was the age at which uh, you were responsible for yourself, and the laws, whether they were common laws or statutory laws or whatever, were held against you as as if you were an adult. So, in other, in other words, what you're saying is the society decides when I reach the age of, of majority. Uh, right. In other words, I don't even have the freedom to decide when I'm me. No, you, you're right. You do. When you when you leave the home, when you say I'm going to take care of myself, right? You're you're Taking uh, the responsibility from yourself, your parents are your caretakers. They don't, they don't own you, right? And that's why you're, that's why you're born free. Their parents don't own you, but they have a responsibility to take care of you. That's why parents who put their kids in dumpsters are tried for murder, right? Well, why, why are parents required to take care of their children? I mean, is that part of? The well, actually, historically, law? they weren't, they weren't required to. Uh, in general, though, the, you know, in the vast majority of cases. No one cares for a child more than their parent, right? And so that really was taken care of by itself. And parents who didn't care for their kids, their their family tree did not, uh, it it died, right? The river. Right. It went for a swim. 